here. Hello. Yeah, I have to, to zoom as much as possible. Okay. Turn it to a greater thing, no? By using the possibility, I, won't <laughs> I would like to say hello to everyone who is listening to me. Sorry? Uh, see you in a while. You will see me in a while. <laughs> Yeah, it's been easier. I'm uh, talking to no one and a lot of people see me.
ਸਿੱਖ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਅਸਲ ਚ ਲਿਖਣਾ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ go here <laughs> there is a lot of places and uh, yeah since there will be only uh, i don't know 15 persons yes i guess you are asking me <laughs> you have to ask them where they are Sorry? No one is missed? Did no one? No one is there? Hello. So it was okay.
Hello. Okay, okay. No, you can you can take a vote and, and sit. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So Gregory, Gregory is there, Oliakop is there, Matthias, I don't know. Uh, they no, I. Gregory <laughs> uh, is not. Uh, they disappear. They say they will appear. Uh, I. On est sûr qu'il s'est mis à réveil là parce qu'il est un peu tôt pour lui. Non, et Nadia Et Nadia <rire> Non, c'est encore, c'est encore. C'est still. Uh, I, yeah, I have, I have to stop speak French. <rire> Hello. No, 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 no. He uh, only this, uh, this, this area, uh, th that camera shows. Yeah, it's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th that camera, that camera works.
Uh, no, he, he hasn't sent anything, but Oli also hasn't sent anything, and uh, Oli is here. So I... Could you, could you speak English? <laughs> Ah, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, uh, he connected through WebEx, but okay, okay. Yeah, may maybe even it's okay. I don't know how much people will be system maintain, but I guess yeah, it's much better than a video. Maybe we could have more people. <laughs> Not only members of the jury, <coughs> as we do usually. Yeah. Oh, my dear. Hello. 
No, Jean-Nicolas Jean uh, <laughs> is not the member of the jury. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, I will share my screen. Um, could you could you now see my screen? Okay, okay. So, hello, hello. Um, I'm Sergey, and my thesis topic is identification and characterization of boundary conditions for patient specific biomechanical stimulation. And today I'm going to present you the research and the results of my study. My PhD topic is a part of a big project which is called HyperNAF project. It includes 13 research institutes and 16 PhD students. And the main goal of this project is to create a surgical navigation platform which helps with surgical workflow. As an example, a liver surgery was taken because it's one of the most common surgery in the world. Each research institute is working on a certain aspect of the problem. In my case, uh, my goal is to specify boundary conditions to improve the stimulation accuracy of the liver. Let me first introduce the context of my work. So typically during surgery, surgeons would like to see uh, the positions of tumors and internal liver structure. It will simplify uh, surgical procedure and reduce post-operative com uh, complications. However, usually they use uh, cameras that could provide them only with a superficial local view. One possible solution is to use the mechanical model of liver. Registered on intraoperative view, it will predict the behavior of the liver and therefore describe the positions of internal structures. It's important to mark that uh, uh, this uh, prediction has to be done in real time. Since during man manipulations, surgeons would like instantly see the changes that is done with liver organ. The essential moment here is we work with in a patient specific context. So we have to adapt the parameters of our biomechanical model to work with a specific patient, so to simulate the behavior of a specific patient. There are three main components which every biomechanical model contains. It's liver shape, it's biomechanical parameters, and it's boundary conditions. The liver shape could be taken from preoperative CT scans, which surg surgeons are usually done for planning purposes. The, in case of mechanical process, they could be done uh, could be taken from elastography, particularly ultrasound elastography. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, works uh, which describe uh, the biomechanical properties of liver. But in case of boundary conditions, to the best of our knowledge, there is no technique with which we could measure them and uh, uh, the information about them is generally missing. However, they are important. To show that boundary conditions are important, we decided to perform a simple experiment. We take a brick, which we modeled with hyperelastic material. We fix it from one side and we apply stage force. We also add nine validation points uh, to see how the brick deforms in case of different scenarios. And we uh, modify the stiffness of the material brick and as well as boundary conditions. By modifying boundary conditions, we replace this fixed region by two small uh, fixed uh, points at the corners of the 
beam. The result shows that uh, in case when we change boundary conditions, uh, the deformation, the difference in deformation could be compared with the case when we increase the thickness on 100% or decrease it on 33%. And this actually a lot, and it shows that we accurately uh, boundary conditions definitely influence the uh, the mechanical behavior of the object. In case of uh, liver, uh, the boundary conditions are mainly presented by ligaments, which cover liver from different parts. The liver ligaments are not uh, real ligaments by aperitoneum folds. Aperitoneum is a serous membrane uh, in abdominal area, which covers uh, different organs and structures, including liver. Unfortunately, this peritoneum is studied very poorly, and so the description of ligaments is limited only up to their general information. Apart from ligaments, there are several blood vessels inside liver. Uh, they could be detected by a CT scan, but uh, they usually form attachments of the liver to the blood vessels only in one particular region. And so they do not completely determine uh, the shape of the uh, organ uh, in case of different deformations. Therefore, as we could see, uh, the information about boundary conditions around liver are limited up to general description. So we need uh, somehow to create uh, approximation to uh, simulate the influence of these boundary conditions on the liver. In case of general uh, uh, surgical operation, there are two, uh, there are two data available. Uh, first of all, we usually have preoperative CT scan that surgeons take for planning purposes, and also we have intraoperative recordings. These intraoperative recordings are not very accurate, and they uh, usually describe only superficial behavior of the liver, but they could give us some information about uh, the behavior of the liver related to a specific patient. And so we could estimate boundary conditions based on the available data. The problem of estimation of boundary conditions is not new. There are already several approaches that are dedicated to this topic. The first approach is uh, where authors uh, define so-called compliance boundary conditions. The authors introduce the notion of region of interest, and yes, that this region of interest is attached to the whole object using some additional attachments, which they present as aligned strings. These additional attachments, uh, they form an influence on the region of interest, and the authors try to estimate them by uh, comparing the uh, constraint and free motion. As a result, they get some estimation for the aligned align string. The main limitation here is that to solve the estimation system, we need to have uh, some observations inside uh, the region of interest, while usually in our case we have a superficial observation. And also this approach is uh, sensitive to uh, accuracy of the observations. In the second paper, the authors uh, have uh, uh, two shapes of the same liver, which is acquired in different deformed configurations. They present boundary conditions and certain constraints, and they try to identify them by matching one shape to another. And the transformation matching will give us some information about uh, these boundary conditions. By presenting these constraints as uh, force field, they estimate the parameters of the process which were applied to, to perform this transformation. The main limitation here is that this approach requires a true complete configuration of the same organ, while uh, usually for diagnosis purposes, surgeons take only one CT scan. And the third approach is based on inverse simulation. The authors uh, propose to estimate boundary conditions as uh, forces with unknown intensity. They have a model which, simu which simulates the behavior of the object, and also they have uh, some sensors which describe the position of the real object. They express uh, the positions of the sensors in terms of unknown intensity, and then uh, they try to estimate them by minimizing the difference between uh, sensors on the real object and on the simulation model. And as a result, uh, they get uh, the parameters for the intensity. The main limitation here is that we implicitly imply that uh, in case of inverse simulation, our model uh, perfectly simulates the behavior of the real object. While in our case, we usually sacrifice the model accuracy in favor to get a real-time performance. The observations in this case also has to be very accurate. Therefore, with, without uh, finding any uh, uh, idea, we propose our own solution to estimate boundary conditions. 
Our solution is based on uh, the LIBO model, which would simulate as hyperelastic material, and ligaments model, which would simulate as strings, which are attached to this LIBO model. It contains two steps. During the first step, we generate initial approximation of our string positions and parameters. During the second step, we correct our initial approximation based on intraoperative images, which are available for specific patients. Let's now look in a bit details, uh, in more details on the underlying model. So on the next slides, I will uh, describe in a bit more details the model which, which we choose to simulate liver and ligaments. A liver is a typical volumetric object. In case of liver, we need to simulate the positions of internal structures and tumors, and therefore we need uh, a model to simulate uh, the internal behavior of the liver. So finite element model is a good choice to do this. Also, we need to stay in real-time context, so our model has to be quite light. And uh, uh, the experiments show that liver model has a non-linear specific behavior. Therefore, uh, there are several possible choices. We could be, we need to use hyperelastic model with the simplest material, like Saint-Pinan Kirchhoff material, Neuhuken, or Muni Riedler. So, to select the best option, we decided to compare this material. We perform all experiments in SOFA framework, which allows us to simulate uh, the behavior of finite element models in real time. Since surgeons usually to access the posterior parts of liver bend, the anterior parts, we decided to use bending simulation as a simulation to compare. Uh, also, uh, we, uh, for our B model, we uh, uh, use different materials and uh, we compare the simulation results as well as their computation time. The result shows that for all hyperelastic materials, uh, the simulation accuracy is approximately the same. Uh, there is uh, the difference is not more than several thousand. On the other hand, in case uh, in terms of computation time, the fastest is Sentinel Kirchhoff material. Neahuken is six percent uh, slower. Muni Rivlin is slightly a bit more slower. Therefore, since our main idea is to perform a uh, simulation in real time. Uh, we decided uh, finally to choose a hyperelastic model, which is based on Sentin Ankershoff material. The ligaments are thin continuous membranes that attach liver to the surrounding organs and tissues. So to simulate the ligaments, we need to, uh, to look at the theory of uh, thin plate elements. There are several possible choices. We can use a general finite element model uh, and uh, use just a thin model. We could use superficial um, uh, models like constant frame triangle or shell elements, and also we could use masking system. The masking system is uh, a more appropriate approach for us, since uh, it's fast and it allows to easily handle topological changes. And finally, our main idea is not to simulate the ligaments accurately, but only uh, to simulate the influence on the liver model. Therefore, we decided to use a masking system uh, to simulate uh, the ligaments' behavior. Speaking about ligament uh, stress strain curves, uh, the ligaments, are unfortunately, there is no information uh, which is uh, dedicated to description of uh, human peritoneum, to stress strain relation of human peritoneum. So we decided to look at stress strain curves of general human ligaments, including ankle and knee ligaments. Uh, the description, in general, uh, the stress strain curve is split into three parts. There is a polynomial part on the first. Uh, the first part is polynomial part, where we uh, the fibers are switching. The second part is linear region, where uh, we stretch the fibers. And finally, we have a fracture. Anyway, uh, in most uh, researches, uh, the ligaments are simulated with nonlinear models. So we can't rely on linear strings. And therefore, we decided to rely on cubic strings to simulate the ligament's behavior. In case of cubic springs, the reaction force for the springs contains two parts. Uh, the value of the force, and we simulate it as cubic polynomial curve based on strain, and the direction of uh, the force, and we simulate it as the direction of the force in case of linear strings. To verify how our model works, we compare it with uh, uh, a referent uh, hyperelastic model. Uh, to perform this comparison, we selected all stress strain curves related to description of all ligaments in the from several papers. Then um, we selected minimal and maximal curve uh, from uh, this set of curves. 
then we generated a, a shape which present uh, a piece of thin continuous membrane and we simulate this shape with hyperelastic near hooking material and finally we f uh, can f uh, find the parameter the young modulus for this near hooking material the way that it behaves like the, des uh, the described plastic and curve after that uh, we generate a masking system which has the same shape and then uh, we uh, we estimate the parameters of masking system the way that they behave like uh, the hyperelastic material. And we compare the results. Uh, since we are interested not in simulation of ligaments, uh, but only on their influence on the liver model, we compare only the attachments to the liver, which are marked as yellow pairs. And the result shows that uh, for these attachments, for strains up to 45 person, the average difference doesn't exceed uh, 3 millimeters for both curves. And since all other curves lie in between uh, this uh, maximal and minimal curve, so we expect that uh, the difference for other split strain relations remains the same. On the other hand, the masking system is approximately 30 times faster than uh, in the element model. And therefore, uh, to simulate uh, the ligament's behavior, we decided to use a cubic masking system. Let's now look at uh, the components of our uh, approximation of our estimation process. In case of liver positions, we decided to, uh, to rely on statistical atlas. We don't know, unfortunately, the positions uh, for specific patients, but uh, there is a uh, data available uh, where the uh, ligaments uh, are segmented on the liver model. And we could use this data to construct statistical atlas which is a common approach in the uh, medical domain, and then use it to uh, approximate uh, the positions of, of our ligaments. Uh, the essential moment here is that every liver, is, uh, every liver shape is patient-specific, and there is no uh, the correspondence between them. So uh, to solve this problem, we rely on large deformation deformorphic metering approach. In this case, the main idea of this approach is to perform deformation as a shape transformation, which is based on a certain amount of interpolation parameters. To compare the shapes, we uh, use a very fault method, which is meshless. And based on uh, this uh, very fault comparison, we could uh, define a registration as uh, substitute uh, finding the missing parameters, uh, the way that the transformed shape will be uh, similar to target shape in terms of uh, variable component. And the average shape, uh, to compute the average shape, we could take one shape from the database, we could elastically register it on all database shapes, and then compute pressure to mean, which um, minimizes the registration variance. Using a registration and uh, average shape creation approach, we finally construct our statistical atlas. So initially we have uh, a set of uh, levers with segmented ligaments and we align them. Then we construct an average shape. We uh, compute statistics on, on an average shape to avoid uh, any shape variations related to specific patients. Then we register all, uh, uh, elastically register all shapes on the average shape and then extract a set of curves uh, which are related to uh, segmented ligaments. For these uh, segmented ligaments, we then compute statistics. To compute statistics, we intersect uh, the shape with a set of planes, and uh, we compute statistics in every plane. The intersection of planes with the curves gives us the points, and for them, it's easy to compute statistics. And we compute average uh, and standard deviation. The uh, configuration of set of planes depends on type of ligament, uh, but we use uh, easily uh, we generally use parallel planes and radial planes. Then we match the, our statistics with shape interpolation functions to the average shape, and we register our shape, average shape, on the target model uh, using elastic registration, and we extract, uh, apply these interpolation uh, functions to extract the statistics for the target shape. And as approximation of our ligament positions, we use an uh, uh, statistical average. So, uh, yeah, uh, for elastic registration and uh, average mesh creation, we use Deformetrica software, which is freely, freely available for non-commercial purposes. 
to verify how our approach works, we decided to perform experiment. We take 15 liver models with segmented ligaments. We use supporting uh, meshes to generate statistics for haploids and one mesh for validation. On the slide, you can see the uh, the curve, um, the result of uh, distribution of segmented curves, which are registered on the average sheet. On the next slide, you could see the result of the um, uh, statistical uh, of the statistical atlas registered on the validation mesh. It's uh, it's visible that uh, the statistical average, which marks is with uh, yellow dots is differs from the, the statistical curves that were segmented manually, which mark with the black dots. The difference is uh, different for every ligament, for host form ligament is approximately 2 cm, for coronary is uh, 6 and a half millimeters. But according to our knowledge, this is the best approach to approximate the positions of the ligaments, and also we expect to compensate for this uh, position difference by estimating slightly different parameters during our correction step. Let's now look at initializa initialization of ligament parameters. Since we don't, uh, unfortunately, there are no available sensitivities laws related to human peritoneum, but we finally find a paper which described the statistical curves related to peak peritoneum, and we use these statistical curves to initialize the ligament parameters. Uh, our initialization process contains two steps. Initially, we generate a hyperelastic uh, model, uh, which uh, describes uh, with the shape of a piece of thin continuous membrane. And we perform model stretching, and we substitute the parameters. We use Meyerhofen material, and we substitute uh, the Young's model for this Meyerhofen material, the way that it behaves like a statistical curve. For this, we use FEBI optimization model, which is available in FEBI software. During the second step, we generate the mass spring system, which has the similar shape. We perform stretching of the spring, and we uh, estimate the parameters of the spring the way that they behave similar to the reference hyperelastic model. For this, uh, for th uh, this estimation uh, technique, we use a uh, Hilton approach which will be described uh, uh, later. And uh, as a result of our parameters, uh, as an approximation of uh, our boundary conditions model, we use uh, the parameters which were estimated for the masking system. Let's, uh, let's the correction process. So in case of corre uh, correction step, we correct the uh, parameters of our boundary conditions model based on intra-traded data related to a specific patient. It's important to remark that in this case, uh, the estimated parameters will be also patient-specific. There are several requirements for this correction process. It has to be in real time, since uh, we perform this estimation during surgery, it has to deal with topological changes. It has to sequentially process uh, uh, the new observations, since uh, when the surgery, surgery goes, we have new observations. And finally, and finally, it has to be robust with the with the uh, observation noise, since our intraoperative uh, uh, our intraoperative tools are quite noisy, there exist several approaches to process this. And finally, uh, we decided to, to choose a common filtering approach. A common filtering approach is relatively fast. It allows us to deal with uncertainty, and finally, it allows us to process our data in a sequential manner, uh, so uh, and to provide us with intermediate results. So we consequentially update our model as far as new observations uh, are available. In common filtering process, but yes, we have some um, uh, process, dynamic process that goes during certain period of time, and we have some observations, uh, noisy observations, uh, that give us some information about this process. We also have some model which simulates this process. Uh, it uh, might be imperfect, and we have some unknown state wi which we are trying to estimate. Initially, we have some initial approximation related to our known state. The common filter itself uh, is a loop that contains two steps. During prediction step, we predict uh, the next uh, uh, state of our model based on currently available uh, unknown state, or currently estimated unknown state. 
During correction step, we compare the predicted observations with the real one, and we uh, update our unknown state based on this comparison. And we repeat this process continuously uh, uh, with getting a full to intermediate result. There are three main components which uh, come in filtering process containers. First of all, it's underlying model. In our case, the underlying model contains of LIVO model, which we simulate as hyperelastic finite element model. And the shape of the model we take from uh, CT images taken uh, from preoperative CT images. It's also a ligament model. In case of ligament model, we simulate them as cubic sphinx, cubic mastering system. W uh, the positions for cubic mastering system we take from statistical atlas and their parameters from available stress strain curve. The second element are observations. The observations might be some detected features or markers on our liver model. Uh, the most important moment that they follow the liver deformation and they thus give us some uh, description about its behavior. And finally, it's a known state. In case of unknown state, we take the liver positions and also the parameters of boundary conditions model. Of course, we're trying to estimate boundary conditions on the other hand. Uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, we're trying to predict, uh, we're trying to create uh, the model which predicts uh, the behavior of the liver in case when observations are missing. Uh, the common filtering process is a stochastic process, and every unknown is presented there at the Gaussian distribution, which has a certain mean and variance. Since for our underlying model we use a nonlinear model, we have to transfer this Gaussian distribution through our nonlinear process. For this case, we, uh, we use unstandard common filtering approach, where this transformation is based on transformation of uncertainty. In this case, for Gaussian distribution, we generate a set of sigma points, which present the probabilistic, uh, probabilistic uh, information related to our unknown state. We transfer them uh, through our nonlinear system, and we reconstruct the Gaussian distribution based on the transferred sigma points. It's important to mark that we need to have uh, to keep information about uh, mean and variance for all unknowns in our system. So in case of uh, an unknowns in our system, we need to generate at least n plus one sigma points. The general uh, algorithm looks like this. Initially, we have some initial approximation for our boundary conditions model. Then uh, at every iteration, we generate some sigma points. Each sigma point contains the parameters of our mastering system as well as positions of ligaments, and some of them are P2s. Then, every sigma point, we execute simulation step to uh, describe, uh, to simulate uh, the behavior of the liver related to next uh, time frame. And we compute the predicted state as mean of all uh, sigma points. Then for every sigma points, we generate predicted, observa predicted observation, and we compute uh, the predicted, uh, our final predicted observation as mean for all these observations. Then we get our real observations from intraoperative data. We compare uh, all these observations, and finally we update our uh, unknown state based on this comparison. And we repeat this process continuously. So uh, the main uh, problem in this uh, process workflow is prediction step. Since we need to generate a lot of sigma points, and for every sigma point, we need to compute a simulation. Therefore, if uh, our model contains at least uh, several hundred of nodes, we need to generate uh, several hundred of sigma points. And therefore, uh, one iteration of uh, data simulation process will, will be very time consuming. So uh, there exist uh, certain possibilities to improve this process. Uh, one of them is uh, reduce order and something common filter. The main idea is to perform a state covariance of our model and to neutralize the state in the factorized form. An option will be to use uh, the components which contains uh, the most uh, variance of the system. So, uh, and in our case, uh, we could consider uh, the model stiffness and boundary conditions as such components. Since the covariance between uh, the model positions, in case of the mechanical model, it depends on the stiffness uh, and uh, boundary conditions parameters. The modified approach now looks like this. 
we have our reduced state and we generate signal points related to reduced state. We transfer, we generate uh, a uh, signal points, uh, transfer signal, generate signal points related to general state. We process them uh, through our nonlinear system as in general ensemble trauma filtering approach. And uh, then based on the transfer signal points, we update our transformation matrix between general and reduced state. And then we update the reduced state of our system. Another possibility is to use preconditioner. A preconditioner is an operator that transforms our space to a much more regular space. So if we use an iteratic solver to solve uh, our uh, system, uh, it could converge just in two iterations. And uh, finally, the simulation step will be fast. The important moment is uh, that the conditioner doesn't have to be the inverse to our system, but it has to be uh, the multiplication by system matrix has to be close to unit. And so the idea that we have in mind is to compute the conditioner as inverse system matrix for one of the sigma points and to use them uh, no, to, to compute the inverse of our system for one of the sigma points and use it as the conditioner for all other sigma points during our uh, estimation step. Therefore, since uh, all sigma points, uh, they just differ by just attributing uh, some uh, boundary conditions, parameters, and uh, model positions, it has to work uh, in general, it, uh, the simulation process has to be faster. To verify how it works, we decided to perform an experiment. We take a cylinder, we fix it from one side, and apply several springs the parameters of which we're trying to estimate from another side. We apply uh, also periodic force to perform deformations for the cylinder, and then we apply several uh, positions, uh, black points, that uh, serve us as non-observation. And we compare the computation time as well as the simulation accuracy for the estimated spring parameters uh, for the, uh, every version of the filter. The result shows that uh, the most accurate uh, filter is ensemble trauma filter, but reduced order count version uh, just in improve, increase uh, the simulation accuracy is 10% uh, uh, less. And in case of when we use uh, the preconditioner, idea is 16% uh, less. On the other hand, if we talk about computation time, uh, the reduced order version of Kalman filter is approximately 200 times faster than the general ensemble common filter. And when we use preconditioner, it still gives us a 30% improvement. So since we still have to be in real-time context, and since uh, our prediction step is very, is very computationally cost costly, we finally decided to use reduce the common filter with preconditioning approach. In the last part of this uh, of the correction step, I would like you to show the experiment which is uh, related to uh, human liver. We take a patient with uh, the model for the liver was taken from a patient with segmented ligament. To generate ground truth model, we use a very dense mesh, approximately 70,000 elements. We use first Ogden material, the parameters of which we taken from the literature, and we use neohookian material to simulate the behavior of the ligament. We also apply periodic forces and we uh, generate 14 uh, surface markers on the front part of the liver which serve us as non-observation. To perform a data simulation step uh, we use another model which was approximately 7500 elements uh, with sentinel shock material. And also uh, to simulate uh, ligaments we use springs uh, which were attached to liver and uh, to some fixed points in space. And we, during our data simulation process, we estimate the parameters of the spring. For validation, we generate 12 internal markers that were more or less uh, uniformly distributed inside the liver model. And we compare their positions uh, uh, with respect to ground truth data. Uh, for comparison, we take two cases. In one case, uh, we use uh, simulate uh, the ligament as our masking system with estimated parameters. As for another case, we simulate uh, the ligament as a fixed boundary condition, using fixed boundary condition. 
And the result shows the simulation accuracy for the case when we use estimated boundary conditions is, uh, is three times more accurate. The difference is three times less. And this actually, uh, from this result, we could conclude that if we estimate boundary conditions, it will uh, sufficiently improve the simulation uh, accuracy of the model. As the last step of my presentation, I would like to show you the experiment uh, which was based on a real uh, human liver. In this ca case, we take a human cadaver, uh, so we simulate an uh, open surgery case. Uh, we use spotting surface markers uh, as known observations, which we track, and we use nine deep fiducials, uh, which were inserted inside liver uh, for validation purposes. During our procedure, we acquired several CT scans. Uh, some of them were uh, acquired for the deformed liver to compare the deformation difference. Uh, to manipulate liver, we use a uh, general surgical tool, but uh, the, uh, the, the markers were recorded with a uh, RGBD camera. An RGBD camera is a special type of camera, which in addition to RGB model, have uh, one infrared uh, emitter and two infrared sensors, which allows us to reconstruct uh, the information related to the depth information related to the whole part of the observable domain. The general process for flow looks like this. Initially, from CT images, we reconstruct the liver shape, uh, as well as the positions of uh, superficial and volumetric markers, and we generate our um, init element model. Then uh, we register our statistical atlas on our generated shape. From uh, registered st statistical atlas, we generate our masking system. The generated model that uh, was registered on the intraoperative data. And finally, on intraoperative data, we perform data simulation process and estimate the ligament parameters for estimate uh, the boundary conditions parameters for the masking system. And finally, we uh, perform validation and compare the results. The statistical atlas was uh, created from 15 uh, liver models with segmented ligaments. And as initial approximation for our ligaments, we take a statistical average. Uh, based on that statistical average, we selected a set of points, we extrude them along normals, and then we fix the extrusion. And we also generate masking system to generate uh, the model uh, of our boundary condition. The result of statistical atlas registration and boundary conditions model creation is presented on the screen. To generate uh, uh, to, uh, to register data on the intraoperative images, uh, we selected a superficial uh, surface markers, which we extract from CT scan and also from RGBD data. And then we uh, use uh, iterated closest point approach to match these uh, surface points. Then for stochastic estimation, uh, we segment uh, markers on the, to perform stochastic estimation, we segment markers on the RGB image and uh, this segmentation, using a uh, depth image available, we uh, reconstruct a 3D position of point cloud. Then, uh, to generate trackings for every uh, observed uh, marker, we uh, uh, match the point clouds on the neighbor frames based on minimal distance approach. And finally, we use these trackings uh, for data simulation process. Some of, uh, we selected several of them as control points that control our simulation and others as observations to perform a data simulation uh, approach. To compare, to see the results, we use nine deep fiducials which were inserted inside the liver model and then we take uh, uh, two CT scans uh, which were acquired for the liver, uh, registered all in different shapes. And um, since we observe uh, surface, uh, surface part of the liver, we guess that we uh, the, uh, the superficial part perfectly, and so we match the superficial points for both CT scans, and then we compare the positions of uh, deep fiducials. Well, for comparison, we selected three scenarios. In first scenario, only uh, blood vessels were simulated as uh, fixed region. In second scenario, we added also masking system. The parameters for which we're taking from statistical atlas and stress sensor 
And in first scenario, so we use the spring system with a semi parameters. The result shows that in second scenario and then in third scenario, there is certain improvement, but still uh, the improvement is much less than for the case when we use uh, synthetic data. There might be different uh, reasons for this. One reason is we take into account only uh, falciform and coronary ligaments, while there are still hepatograph, we can have pathoduodenal ligaments which actually are close to the deep pedicels uh, 5 and 6 and which has the, uh, the worst difference. Then also we don't take into account contacts which happens with the liver when it contacts with surrounding organs and tissues. And finally, instead of simulating uh, the impact from surgical tools, we use uh, several points, observed points as control points which and they are also noisy. So as a future steps, uh, we propose to focus on the uh, given problems and try to find the solutions uh, for them. It would be also nice to implement uh, the data simulation process on GPU, since for now it's implemented on CPU and uh, it's close to real time but still not real time. And we hope with the GPU it finally uh, becomes real time. And finally, is in in case of RGBD camera, instead of tracking uh, several markers, we put uh, reconstruct uh, the point cloud related to the whole visible part of the liver, and then use this reconstructed uh, point cloud uh, as our observations to estimate uh, the parameters of boundary condition. It's also important to mark certain limitations of our approach. In case of statistical atlas, our elastic registration depends on initial alignment and works only with accurate segmentations. Also, when we intersect our uh, model with square planes, uh, it is valid only when we compute statistics, statistics for curves. In case of uh, correction step, uh, we need to somehow to find uh, the statistical parameters to initialize our state model variance. We also said common filters works only with Gaussian distributions. Well, in general case, it might some other distribution might describe the fitness parameters better. And finally, convergence rate de depends on initial gear. But despite all limitations, we still uh, believe that uh, this approach is uh, the best approach to estimate boundary conditions uh, for the liver model with respect to the known data. As a conclusion, I would like to say that the main purpose of this work was to improve uh, the simulation accuracy of the liver model by uh, taking into account the influence uh, that are made by boundary condition. In case of liver, they are mainly presented by ligaments and information about them is generally missing. So the idea is to initialize them based, uh, first of all, on statistical atlas and available stress strain curves, and finally to correct them uh, based on intraoperative data. And the result shows that there is a certain improvement in simulation accuracy when we estimate boundary condition. During my PhD studies, so I participated in several publications. I also participated in several conferences and I do uh, all my PhD courses. Among other uh, achievements, it would be nice uh, to mention the Optimus plugin. It's a part of the FAF framework, which allows us to estimate different uh, parameters using nonlinear Kalman filtering process. And then I would like to thank everyone uh, who helped me with uh, physics writing, with my mixed space uh, physics and physics defense, and also with uh, real data, real data acquisition and real data processing, and finally with uh, software. Thank you. Yeah, maybe you have to be closer to this microphone because You can, you can. Let 
Thank you. You are currently you are studying one of the most challenging topics in the universal explanation applies to biological treatment. And you're combining, I think, most of the difficulties. First of all, you won't work in real time, which is I think the same. Forcing you to review as much as possible with your the complexity of your model and sometimes reducing the complexity of your model leads you to make some choices that might be challenging. And you are also studying very complex problems that are related to non-investigatory or Unknown boundary conditions related to ligands or
Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, so uh, what I could say is that we decided to focus on masking systems mainly, yeah, because of uh, real-time, uh, not only because of real-time context, but also because we want to simulate only not the ligaments themselves, but only their influence. You I, I would like to. I, I agree with you. That that was a great discussion when when you were uh, in your manuscript when you were specifying the reason why you were. Uh, I have to remember when you were saying uh, and the, the remarkable connection you were completing the connection where you were found. My question was, compare this relation when you were assigned both types of roads, and what might be a consequence in the difference between the two? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if I understand correctly, you are asking about me the stretching of the reference model and the masking model, yes. and instead yes. of uh, applying forces, uh, uh, you would like to apply the displacement. Yes. No, uh, well, uh, but now I haven't tried to compare them in case of when we, instead of using forces, we're trying to use displacement. And there will be a certain. Uh, okay. Uh, I have also one question. Uh, I think it's on your slide page. Uh, you are using your model to. So that's pretty clear. You, you are trying to analyze the benefits of uh, your free uh, But the reason you are saying that that's your average difference in terms of the measurement is just not free. The structure is not free. It's really necessary. That's the, the observed displacement on the ground. It is neglectable. No, as for us, uh, we're trying to find a model uh, which is uh, quite fast and still has very close, is very close to the, is quite accurate. And uh, we used this uh, near hooking reference model uh, as a ground roof model. Since we don't have any information about real data. <coughs>
when we use Sentinel Answer Shop model uh, material for lever, when we use um, when we estimate parameters for all boundary conditions, in, and of course we don't estimate the ground truth parameters, it's only approximation. So if okay. Actually, for comparison, we use Safa, which is uh, which uh, all our group is working is actively working, and I perform all this comparison in Safa software. And uh, the implementation, the how model were implemented in Safa, it might be different from the implementation uh, of them in another software. So apart from yeah, the theoretical. Uh, Theoretical description, they are different theoretically. It might be also that they are a bit different in implemented in software. And finally, when I compute uh, estimate the computation time, uh, I estimate the computation time in this software framework. certain optimizations that are implemented in these uh, high plastic materials which leads to this or which were implemented for sensing and kershoff material and then for your hooking which uh, leads to such uh, big difference in the computation time but, uh, well I could say that sometimes they are not very accurate able to get uh, the simulation so far is not very accurate and able to get a real time performance yes. in, in general yes I guess the answer is yes. Uh, is yes. Uh, maybe not changing some parameters, but uh, just uh, implementing some code. Uh, 
and do trust you uh, and because you, you repeat it you during your okay. there is really no experimental data about the mechanical behavior of the liver uh, of the ligaments not of the liver ah. uh, human peritoneum and actually, there is a paper of White, which uh, from where I took a uh, description of peritoneum of pig. And the authors, they also, they say that uh, according to their knowledge, it's the first paper where they describe the test and cost related to peritoneum. And also the paper about um, uh, the general description of peritoneum, I don't forget the authors, they also uh, uh, tell that uh, for many years the human just don't consider peritoneum as a separate tissue, but just as a combination of uh, some other tissues. And only recently uh, they start looking at this peritoneum as a separate tissue and start uh, looking at their behavior. And uh, they also give a description of peritoneum, and uh, this uh, description just describes uh, only general. Um, the proteins, the um, amino acids, and some other components which peritoneum contains, but no information about biomechanical properties at all. Uh, one quick question that's very, very short. Uh, on this slide, there's something to say that the slide is here, you can get the value. You Uh, analytically, uh, uh, no, I just find a nice uh, optimization model in FUBIO when you just put the points related to test and curve and it return, uh, computes by applying the curve fitting approach the parameters of your hyperelastic model. Yeah, I need I need to select points and then to put them in the configuration file and then uh, the FBI computes uh, without without making the sample that uh, yes. My last question, because I think it's, it's probably one of the most important in validation work, uh, relates to the atlas that you were, uh, you were considering. Uh, who created your ground truth information? Is it one single system uh, that identifies your, your legal, or is it Nicholas Golis, he, he is Nicholas Golis, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, only one specialist, and he segmented them manually uh, based on his expertise. And uh, yeah, I know that uh, this is very dated data, but unfortunately for now it's the only data that we have. And still uh, these statistics give us some information about initial approximation of uh, ligament position. While without uh, them it's uh, much harder to understand where they are. Yes, I do agree. And do you know what could be, do you know what could be the influence of increasing or reducing your 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 basis. Did you try or is there any information in the literature that you have better idea of what's the minimal size of your initial state of your initial atlas in order to make sure that you will have something accurate or uh, the different models. 
you mean a number of uh, models which you could use for statistics? Mm, I don't think so. I guess the more the better. <laughs> to build atlas because we have only 15 so yeah I use 14 to build atlas and one to compare and no uh, not not yet uh, well I found uh, this uh, approach to work with statistics quite recently and so for now, I just only use it to approximate uh, the initial positions of ligaments. While, of course, I agree that uh, it would be nice to not to use only one mesh valid for validation, but also to use uh, several other meshes and uh, to look at uh, yeah uh, how the difference, uh, what will be the difference for different validation meshes, and how it depends on the amount of uh, models that we use for statistics. And uh, actually, I could say that for now, uh, I use Deformetrica software to compute this statistical atlas. And uh, I use sort of deterministic atlas. And uh, there are also another approaches that are available. But for now, I use the simplest one just to compute statistics. So at some moment, I also would like to look at those approaches, more difficult approaches. But unfortunately, I didn't have time to do this. It would be uh, also nice to look at them and to see uh, will they improve uh, the statistics accuracy or will they change something. Uh, I have time for one very last question. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 and it's, it's a selfish question. It's, it's a question that is directly in my head. So please, the whole thing So, oh well, it's okay. <laughs> I will try to answer. Yes, yes. You know, just you mentioned that you're working on soft uh, organs such as liver, maybe softer than than the liver, but never mind. So soft organs under large very large screen. Uh, you have you have you have your atlas and your atlas gives you only the geometry, the 3D geometry of the organ. Uh, with, uh, yeah, with the ligaments on your atlas. But now uh, the ground for the, the data that you have to complete your optimization and your Identification, the data that you have are only uh, displacement fields in, in one slide because we are using some MRI and we don't have some external uh, So you have your 3D model with your atlas and the data that you have to run your your Kanban filter, your correction, all, all your numerical tools, the only data. Displacement field on one slide. So, which other? Uh, is it sufficient, or do you need some other information? Mm -hmm. And this uh, slide is is in three D space. It's just a. Uh, yeah. Well, of course, the general answer will be we, ha we have to verify how it works. Because the problem of the observability, it's, um, 
a very very difficult problem. Well, anyway, uh, the filter will uh, return uh, uh, the filter is uh, is based on stochastic approach, and so it uh, always returns some results. But uh, the the results could be treated as like uh, we don't know the answer, we never know the answer. But uh, this is the more probabilistic uh, result which we have. And so we yeah, we just need to apply the filter and to see uh, the results that we have and see if it's uh, something wi which is uh, close to what we expect or it's uh, completely different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, well, in this case, what I could say is that the filter is just a least way minimizator. So it just estimates the parameters the way that uh, the observations that we have on liver will be close to the real observations that we have. It doesn't uh, matter how much unknowns we have. Well, well, it matters. It matters, of course. The more unknowns we have, the more some of them will be completely uh, senseless. But uh, we could think about fields and approaches, uh, list way minimizers, and so we could uh, estimate some parameters. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, the field estimates some parameters based on this comparison of this observation. But, uh, well, what I could say that uh, it doesn't know uh, what what is in the underlying model, so uh, the parameters, the estimated parameters, might be completely unphysical, un, uh, well, just completely senseless. Just if we have some uh, crazy parameters, which the our model, the observations on our model behave like real observations, and the filter converts to these parameters, it will say that yeah, these parameters are correct, and everything is correct. So we don't know to perform estimation anymore. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure if it answers your question. <laughs> But, uh, well, uh, in this, uh, the idea that I always uh, have in mind is we need just to verify how it works and to see if it gives us something. <laughs> well, uh, one, one idea that uh, was a book about data simulation is called Twin Experiment. So we generate uh, some ground truth data and uh, we use for data estimation the same model. And we see how it works uh, on this twin experiment. Then if it works on this twin experiment, we uh, instead of ground truth the data, we use another model, more complex, real data, and see is it uh, the same behavior or if the behavior is completely different. And if the behavior is completely different, we need to change something, maybe to estimate some other parameters. Well, for now, that's the only advice uh, that I know, and uh, that's really interesting. Thank you. That's really uh, interesting because indeed, I think you are the best person I have. I think we are coming from different approaches. We are conversing to the same thing. Simple models that can be considered in this. Not simply thinking about creating a professional looking into that and have no information that I could to generate from it. But finally, you realize that you may need to complexify your model and you realize that you're doing it to simplify it. That's <laughs> probably really complex. Uh, so thank you for, uh, for your work, for our discussion. That's, that was really, uh, I was really enjoying, enjoying to read your, your, your CV.
even if it was during the summer and even if that was just rain, it didn't be just rain the summer. Uh, that was my, yeah, that was my, my, my book of the summer. And I really, I think that I think we work and, and I, well, I wish you the best and I hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are you talking about general simulation or stochastic? 
Yeah. <laughs> the people are laughing here and <laughs> Because yeah, sometimes uh, there are problems with uh, simulation. And um, <laughs> we could try to fix it uh, in different ways. Uh, some uh, some people just write their own uh, components uh, where they try, uh, for example, uh, like uh, John Nicole, uh, he wrote his uh, own component and where he created his own finite elements, uh, which uh, is a bit uh, different, implemented a bit differently, and uh, they are they behave more correctly. Uh, sometimes people just try to deal with this uh, to well to use another constitutive flow to <laughs> try to find a walk around. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, uh, if I touch the unit element, it will have Yes, it yes. Okay. It has used the uh, what you find in the public library, but what was it? Then you can mm -hmm. consider that part of simulation that perfectly happens. Uh, well, uh, in my case, I usually use, uh, well, I use all them together in general. I just uh, look at different uh, finite element models that were implemented and uh, different uh, solvers, iterative solvers, and then I try to compare them in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of accuracy, sometimes we'll uh, one uh, method or one solver gives some weird results. I don't use them anymore, just mark them as a uh, well, suspicious solver or suspicious finite element method and try to use another one. But, well, um, I, I haven't verified if all uh, the hyperelastic materials in so far will behave according to uh, the specific curve that we have in literature. Would be of course nice to do this uh, comparison. Maybe uh, what I can do. Uh, okay.
one line of two of three. Sometimes they do finition with no form for a configuration. And uh, I know what is there. Correct. Sometimes it's better if you can play to make the conversion. But the current has to come from it. We can have a place and be changed for the three or six of local content. You can have the information that is saved. And uh, you, uh, when you do your simulation, the information that is only uh, do you notice anything that changes? So it's best that your question is good. Do you notice that it's also if you change the accessibility to the rest? Uh, actually, well, um, yes, uh, I could say that yes, uh, and uh, when you see uh, when instead of uh, 0 0.49 I use 0 0.48, that usually means that I tried with a uh, Poisson ratio equal to 0 0.49 and I have some weight behavior. So, of course, in general case we need to implement somehow uh, some stuff to do to implement inc incompressibility, but as a quick solution, which I have in mind, is just to reduce a bit uh, the Poisson ratio. And uh, well, uh, to make uh, the object have the normal behavior, it's of course yeah not very accurate in terms of uh, simulation of the real uh, object, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for now, for that time, uh, I just uh, took it as the best solution that I have. Uh, so, yeah, my, my solutions like uh, yeah, like other people use zero forty nine, zero forty eight, zero a bit less than zero forty seven. Uh, I probably did but I do not like say it's too compatible and it's very difficult. So uh, there is a lot of change. The compatibility, the main problem is that uh without full paper which is where I say all of the issue I could question. So the moment nobody has but do do I usually say that it was almost incompressible, but uh, <laughs> but not incompressible. And finally, uh, well, uh, what I uh, have to say that um, uh, an another PhD student from Hypernaf, he did experiments with the liver, and he finally the result of this experiment was that when he deformed liver, finally it changes its volume. Uh, he guessed it's because of the blood vessel system, when we deform the liver, the blood uh, flows uh, uh, a bit different. And uh, then, uh, because of that, uh, the shape of the liver compresses a bit. So it's not completely incompressible model. Uh, but to just uh, you know, it's a uh, something that is, I think, very important and that can fix many, many problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I wanted to come back to what uh, you have not yet said. Uh, the criteria is 3 millimeters, and that's 
the deformation reaction from the liver side has to be also the same. I'm not sure.
uh, well, it's not three millimeters everywhere, and uh, the uh, yellow yellow spheres shows this because in uh, um, I, I couldn't show it. Well, I could maybe show with my mouse. Yeah, here for this yellow sphere and for this yellow sphere, the difference is definitely more than three millimeter because if you see these yellow spheres, they are more um, they have a different curve, and while this one has also different curve. For other for other points, uh, it's less than three millimeters. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I understand you. Okay, okay. Another question. Uh, I'm not surprised because uh, as you do, uh, I would have to do a comparison of what we can obtain with the direction. Uh, so we have the direction of 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 the direction um, you are talking about literature that relates to estimation of boundary condition. We are trying. We are trying. To, uh, what problem we are trying to solve? We are trying to estimate the steepness of the object. We are trying. Yeah. Uh, could you specify what problem we are trying to solve? We are trying. I actually compare several Kalman filters, and uh, I just say that reduced soda version is the best one in terms of this Young's modulus and uh, boundary. The other approaches like uh, variation data simulation, uh, it maybe also uh, would be nice to compare them, but uh, the problem is that in case of variation data simulation, it won't work. It won't our problem because common filter allows us to continuously update our model so it's uh, it's a surgical process when we perform surgery and then we update uh, improve the accuracy of our model while in case of uh, variation data simulation we need to uh, get a certain amount of observations then we need to update our estimation based on these available certain amount of observations and that takes time, and that 
Well, while we wait for this estimation, uh, we will lose time, and finally we will update our model much, much more, much later. Uh, so if we compare it with Monte Carlo approach, for example, yeah, the main uh, achievement, uh, the main uh, moment which we're trying to achieve is real-time simulation. So Monte Carlo and will be definitely slower, but uh, well, it might be definitely, it might be more accurate. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, well, what I could also say that, uh, yeah, to compare all these uh, available methods, I also need to implement them. And it will take, uh, because for now I don't know, well, op Optimus, uh, I don't know some other plugins like Optimus, which allow us to combine these data simulation approaches with uh, finite element model. And, uh, yeah, th this will take time. <coughs> If we if we use ligament as as um, so uh, I'm asking uh, what will happen if we simulate ligaments as fixed uh, fixed points. Uh, ah, orientation. We uh, no. Mm. We are trying to estimate uh, not the parameters of sinks. I was trying to estimate uh, not the parameters of sinks, but uh, they are their orientations. Okay. Um. Of course, of course, we need to verify this, but um, mm, I'm not sure. I uh, yes. Uh, well, it will give uh, worse results because uh, the ligaments are connected liver to some um, another surrounding organ, and uh, during surgical simulation we deform liver, and so ligaments are also attached to liver will deform. But all other organs, well, they of course they have a big deformation, but more or less they stay fixed, and uh, therefore these ligaments are attached liver to some uh, more or less fixed environment. So it would be better to simulate them as, uh, maybe not as masking system, as a bit more complex uh, model. But uh, uh, it would be still uh, nice that uh, they fix the li liver to some fixed environment. Uh, I'm not sure if I... Uh, if you understand. Congratulations. 
don't understand every detail of it, but uh, but very interested in in kind of how how this technology uh, can be transferred into the software picture and workflow of what we look at at uh, the Hypernaut project. So so Sajay, he was one of the PhDs uh, in the Hypernaut project that I'm coordinating uh, or coordinated. And I think that both yours and Sam Nicolas' work, uh, the Inguilla work, was one of the most kind of work that picked most out from the more common ways of looking into uh, navigation uh, and soft tissue navigation that we brought in the biomechanical modeling into that workflow, and that were lightweight model, uh, so that it could be working. Uh, closer to a clinical work. So, um, what uh, when it comes to this clinical workflow um, and the time needed, in, if you if you look at it uh, in, into a practical setting, um, the different steps that you need to take in order to prepare a, a certain surgical case uh, and use it to, to register to the patient and make it as a improvement of the medication accuracy and uh, that work is uh, which I got with the reduced soda Kalman filter with precondition and it's uh, 17 um, <laughs> 20, yeah, five, five, approximately 5 frames per second hmm. So it's uh, several times slower, yeah. but I still hope that uh, we use the CPU version, and uh, with GPU version we could improve it. What do you mean by uh, actually? Uh, we want to ask you more about this, this slide number eighteen. And my question to you was: uh, Would the disk system is approximately thirty times faster, uh, faster than what? I, I then the uh, ligament uh, that uh, this uh, hyperelastic uh, finite element model. Mm -hmm. There are the other steps in order to kind of prepare this boundary condition uh, if used in a, in a uh, clinical scenario. Uh, what is the time needed to to set up the model and, and make it work? Uh, to have a certain patient that you, you want to use this. Oh, uh, so now we, we haven't verified it on patients, only on human cadaver. We did experiment on the human cadaver. Ah. But <laughs> at least I in this approach, we're trying to uh, apply an approach which requires uh, minimization of additional, uh, which requires minimal of additional equipment. And uh, We need to have the camera, we need to... Hmm. Maybe, I, uh, maybe I need to rephrase the question. Is uh, how much time it will take to gen uh, generate a finite element model if we have a CT scan of patient to initialize boundary conditions to... More, more, I mean, some, some of the steps needed you can take uh, offline, right? Uh, oh, well, um, interoperatively. Well, interoperatively, we still need to register statistical atlas. Oh, no, we, we could do it on preoperative model, yeah? Okay, then we need just to register the created model on interoperative data. And uh, depends on what approach. We used here ICP approach, and it works in uh, 20, 20, no, maybe uh, 10, 20 seconds it's on registration. And then, uh, yeah, then we have already a liver model, which is uh, in ideal scenario, which is simulating the behavior of the real organ in real time. Hmm. This, 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 
this uh, contribution that you, Jean Nicolas and Andrea, had uh, on the virtual physiological human, uh, there the accuracy was not satisfying. I think that you hadn't considered the boundary conditions at that time. Okay. That it was still something to work on. Yeah. I think you were talking about that could be kind of things, and it puts in a way back to the questions I posed Matthias and, and maybe especially uh, um, Gregory had about kind of, um, first of all, this method that you described here is the experiment that you did in that work uh, together at the end of the hypermap. Mm -hmm. uh, we could do, uh, what we could do is we could uh, register these uh, boundary conditions on the preoperative model. Then. Uh, uh, create uh, this masking system and then try to deform uh, this preoperative model uh, with, together with the uh, boundary conditions model. And mm -hmm. it might give us more accurate results. That, that would be interesting to see because that would kind of in a way validate somewhat um, what, what we have done here, right? Um, well, a certain part of the work, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. but only, only maybe the construction step because uh, for correction step we need interoperative data and we need to because the boundary conditions are correct based on uh, interoperative data. Yeah. Um. Thinking and thinking more. Uh, no, that was uh, back to this. Um, when it comes to this ligament and, and the boundary conditions, what, how, because you have said it, but, uh, but how did you find a boundary or where to construct the boundary condition? Uh, how do you define? Where on the liver you wanted to kind of uh, define the boundary conditions? Uh, based on statistical atlas. So we have uh, 15 models with segmented ligaments. We construct stat statistical atlas from that. And then we register this uh, average shape with statistics on the our target shape. And we, as initial approximation of our ligament positions, we use this uh, statistical average. And then we selected a set of uh, models, we exclude a uh, set of vertices, we exclude them along uh, mesh normals and uh, generate spring systems. It's, uh, it's only approximation in positions and in uh, spring's orientation, but uh, for now it's the best uh, we could propose uh, to generate this uh, masking system. Do you think it would make any Yes, but uh, in uh, the last validation experiment, uh, I also uh, fixed those parts uh, which are related to blood vessel system. And yeah. how was, yeah, so that, that is already done, and then you have this thing that. Uh, uh, mm. I'm uh, well. I uh, simulated them as fixed region, but I'm thinking. I'm still thinking that maybe we have to also to use a more complex model for blood vessel system and also simulate them as some uh, deformable, deformable uh, models, which behaves, uh, which describes the behavior of uh, smooth muscles, smooth muscles. Uh, of from which the blood the blood vessels are. Uh, composed of. Mm. 
in your opinion, what 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 is the most challenging part now to to kind of tackle in order to make this as a useful uh, tool into a a a, a navigation mm -hmm. uh, The most challenging. Uh, as you could see, despite I proposed all those approaches, when I tried on real uh, patient data, there are still uh, there is an improvement, but improvement is not big, not so big. And then I propose I uh, think about certain reasons, and uh, when we look at these reasons, there are so also a lot of other stuff which we could take into account, especially. I guess the most important stuff is uh, contact with uh, surrounding organs, which is uh, I could uh, try to do some work on that, and I could try. It, uh, I actually haven't added this in my thesis, but uh, we could uh, we try to estimate some contact parameters based on common filter and approach and for simple objects uh, we could finally found some positions of the contacts uh, for simple objects and in simple cases but the problem is that uh, the liver is surrounded by all these contacts and we have only a small amount of observations so I'm not sure if we have uh, such amount of unknowns we could estimate something reasonable if we estimate uh, both uh, ligaments uh, parameters and contacts. So I guess there are still a lot of work to do to apply it in uh, real clinical study. Oh well, in the uh, real clinic. Is there anything that you I mean, always uh, interesting to ask? The end of the PhD work. If you knew what you knew or know by now, and you were going to start all over again on your PhD, is it anything that you would have done different? Mm. I, in my process, I guess, uh, well, I'm still thinking that uh, what uh, was proposed here is. Uh, maybe not the best, but one of the best approaches with respect to the data that we have. So still Kalman filter, this large deformation, deformation metric mapping. Uh, on the other hand, if I uh, know what I knew, maybe, um, yeah, I could definitely look at, at uh, this uh, finite element model uh, more carefully and try to validate uh, how they behave with uh, uh, if they behave according to stretch stand curve, and uh, it would be maybe also nice uh, to do the experiment on the real patient uh, much more earlier to see uh, what uh, problems we have and how we could. Uh, yeah, in case of experiment with real patient, I actually also wanted to do an. Uh, Elastography, a uh, measurement of stretch strain curves, and maybe we could also try to track uh, the surgical instruments with an external tracker and try to simulate the impact of this, those tools. But unfortunately, because of uh, these COVID times, uh, we could uh, perform experiment only like uh, we performed it without all these additional equipment. But it will be nice to apply all uh, possibilities uh, and all uh, what we know. Uh, to get much more knowledge related to this uh, real patient experiment and to see how will this knowledge will help us to estimate uh, bound, mm, not boundary conditions but uh, will uh, this knowledge will help us to improve the uh, model the accuracy of our liver model yeah. um, Thank you very much for interesting work with uh, with a very challenging task, uh, and it has been a really important contribution for the Hasanar project. And we look forward to, to see what we can do with the uh, what they've done there. And thank uh, you so much for that. Uh, how it can be used uh, in 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 a in this scenario. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.
Thank you, Ole. Well, the near hooking model is described by Young's modulus and uh, Paulson Ridge. Mm. Okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe, but well, uh, I usually uh, like uh, sending on Kishop material. I usually look at it near hooking material. It's a material that's characterized by two parameters. And, uh, and right. But uh, okay. The other one is Poisson ratio. In your, in your, your thing is right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I see. I. Uh, I have I have an idea uh, that it's better to have uh, not very accurate model but still in real time, and to have more accurate model but not in real time. Because when you have not uh, accurate model but still in real time, you could see still uh, follow what is happening. In area and uh, well, uh, when we could talk about streaming uh, sometimes, if it streaming is not very accurate but in real time, we could still follow it. If it's accurate but not in real time, we um, we are not fo following it anymore. In case of uh, model, uh, when uh, it's not in real time, what's happening on augmented reality system is now is not uh, corresponding to what surgeon uh, perform. And uh, well, I um, saw a nice video uh, on uh, YouTube where. Well, it's a science fiction video, but uh, it was about uh, a guy who suddenly stopped uh, uh, interacting with uh, reality in real time and started interacting with, with a certain delay. And yeah, it was a funny video because he tried to do some stuff and finally it, it was completely a disaster because he tried to drink a glass of water, but finally since it was in a delayed uh, Delay time, uh, the water just flows away. Try to um, drive a car, but when he pressed the gas pedal, uh, yeah, yeah, he just crashed uh, the wall. So I guess uh, the real time is in this case is uh, at least in the uh, term in augmented reality is more important because you need to see what happens in real time. But as far as we are there, and if we have a certain uh, amount of frames per second, we could now then uh, improve the complexity of our model and simulate it more accurately. So that's <laughs>
Ok, yeah, yeah. But I use cubic masking system, so it's also hyperlasting behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, so it behaves like cubic. Oh yeah, in case of moon, yeah, the ligament models attached to liver, so with uh, yeah. No. No, no. Okay. Yeah, the from the sister. Thank you. 
<laughs> I Thank you, Stefan. Well, I'm not only a computer science, I also do as a mathematician. And as a uh, mathematician, I like uh, perfectness and uh, try to do some stuff in the best possible way. <laughs> That's why sometimes when things doesn't go well, despite it looks like it's uh, simple uh, to <laughs> this, 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 I was so frustrated. Thank you. I have to ask. Okay.
Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, uh, yeah, for me it also was uh, an interesting uh, journey, uh, which uh, goes for four years. Well, in general, PhD is three years. So uh, it was the first time when I lived for in another country for so long time. <laughs> And also during my hypernav uh, uh, trip, uh, trips, I uh, trip. Uh, I have never, uh, uh, I have never did so much journey in my life. <laughs> and uh, this journey, uh, this hypernav training event, second event. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, for this nice journey, for the uh, providing me with money with uh, a lot of advices with uh, yeah with uh, corrections uh, that you do in my thesis in my in my speech not during thesis defense but during mid thesis defense and during some repetitions um, well <laughs> i dedicated this work to my parents Th thank you, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> 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 Merci, merci. Uh,